Hello everyone, welcome back to OSD Recovery's YouTube channel. I really enjoyed the video I did yesterday going through one of the exercises. So I did want to go through another one today. And this is chapter 16 in uh, How to Stubbornly Refuse to Make Yourself Miserable. So we're going to go through that. But before I go any further, if you could please subscribe down below. Lots of great content going up. Uh, a couple of the moderators are sick right now, so you're just stuck with me for a little bit. Uh, I've been doing a lot of videos but hopefully more people will get on here soon so we have a nice variety. The reason I think it's really cool that we have a bunch of moderators and people who have made extreme progress, it's good for hope because you get to see different people because what happens is, which I'll be doing a video on tomorrow, on how we're not different. People will think that they're different. That's all I'm gonna say about that. And OCD is OCD, even though particular fears, you need to understand You know what about that fear is why it's latched. So the basically REBT, Rational Emotive Behavioral Therapy, which Dr. Albert Ellis, the founder of Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, founded in 1955, it's called Achieving Emotional Change is Not Enough. Maintaining it is harder. Now, I think this is really important to talk about because on the road to recovery, what happens is we think we're going to hit some imaginary line and then we're never, like no problems are going to happen ever again. We're like we're going to never have anxiety again. Like we'll be just in this bliss state. Well, that's not true and that's not reality. And we all go through tough things in life and things that happen in our lives that, you know, whether it's losing a family member or, you know, you might get terminally ill. So these tools are just great for life. So the beginning quote in this chapter is so good. It says, Mark Twain said, it's easy to quit smoking, I've done it a thousand times. This sums up the history of dieting too. For every hundred people who lose 30 pounds or more by various diets, 90% will gain all of it back. Similar with psychotherapy, millions of people change by going for therapy, but almost all of them at times fall back for a while to their feelings of anxiety, depression, rage, and so forth. This isn't to say that, you know, you're never going to recover from OCD. I have to premise that. But a lot of people don't reach recovery or the state they want to be because they don't think they have to maintain stuff. That I was just talking in the WhatsApp group uh, yesterday or today, maybe it was today, about this idea about a 12-week course in CBT or a, a five-week crash course in REBT. If that's the way it's being presented to you, then I don't think that that's exactly what you need to be doing. Because what happens is, is this is a philosophy change about life. It's not just... The dogs are barking. It's not just a change on how basically you're going to go about, like you're not just going to do a 12-week course in CBT and your whole entire life is going to be just cured of all misery forever. Sorry, I had to move that because I want to make sure that they're not going crazy. So let's go through some of the points that are remember when it comes to maintaining your improvement. So when you fall back to your old feelings of anxiety, depression, or self-downing, zero in on the exact thoughts, feelings, and behaviors you once changed to make yourself improve. So a lot of people during setbacks, because if you're having a setback, especially when you're much further along in recovery, those setback, those setbacks have a little bit interesting aspect to them because you'll just be like, I'm never going to recover. Like my life is completely over. I'm back to square one. That's catastrophizing. One of the most important things for me during my recovery has been to slow things down. We don't need to figure things out right now. We just can make decisions and go with them and think about them, but not in an analytical way where you're like, does my partner love me? Does he not love me? It's just going with the flow, slowing thing down, things down. And when you have a setback or a relapse, it's about realizing, you know, I, ha I know the tools and how I got to where I was before. So I'm going to do what it takes to get back to that, even if it takes me a couple months. So basically... These are the things that a lot of people will happen. So you stop telling yourself that you were worthless and that you couldn't, you could succeed at what you wanted. Okay. You did well in a job and prove to yourself that you have an ability to do so. This is super important. I'm doing another long video soon about the importance of behaviors. You could dispute all you want. But if you're still engaging in avoidance, compulsive behaviors, or you're still doing things that are, are basically against your new belief system, the disputing is going to do very little. Just as if you do all these exposures and you're chasing a relief of an exposure and you actually aren't working on the core fear. There needs a balance of both. So basically, 
rational beliefs. This is the premise of the next point. When you are working on looking at the realm of life through unconditional self-life and other acceptance, you start to basically implement that into other areas of your life that you don't, you didn't even think that you needed it in. So you might have a couple fears, you're going through recovery, there's things in your life that aren't like a latched fear, but you start to see them in a more rational sense and then they actually, you could actually work on that as well. So there's actually a, a point coming up where you actually can work on that a little bit further. So keep, this is so, this is so important, keep taking risks my my computer light when it goes dark. Keep taping, taking risks and doing things that you irrationally fear, such as riding in elevators, socializing, job hunting, or creative writing. As you're overcoming one of your irrational fears, keep thinking and acting against it on a regular regular basis. Do what you're afraid to do and do it very often. This is key. This is what most people get wrong. Let's go see what these. Let's go see what these maniacs are up to. Sorry to pause the video. Hey, hey, come here. Come here. Come here. Inside, let's get a treat. You see what you gotta do to like distract these? Oh, 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 sh are you okay? She just fell between the steps. All right, jeez, come here. So yeah, going against your fears and doing the things that you really, really, really want to do is very, very, very important to getting over those fears. I, ca I can't be any more clear about that. If you're still engaging in avoidance behaviors and compulsive behaviors, disputing is only going to get you so far. That's really, really important. So if you feel uncomfortable when you force yourself to do things you irrationally feel, to hell with the discomfort. Don't allow yourself to cop out and thereby to preserve your fears forever. Often make yourself as uncomfortable as you can be in order to erase your fears and to become unanxious and comfortable later. Now, this, remember, this isn't geared towards OCD, so we do have to talk about the importance of not chasing exposures, which a lot of people get wrong. There's a lot of people in our community that think that you can't be compulsive towards exposures. You absolutely can be. It needs a balance by someone that understands OCD. They'll be able to tell, and you'll be able to tell the more you work on this, if you're really, really chasing exposures. It's okay, boo-boo, you gotta relax. Oh my gosh. No, I know, I know, I know, the two of you. Look at this, now I got a, I got one here between my legs as I'm scratching, and one back here. So, learn how to clearly see the difference between your healthy bad feelings, such as those of sorrow, regret, and frustration. So those are healthy, you'll understand when you read the book. Frustration, you're never not gonna be frustrated again. I used to think that. It's very easy to think that. You know, you start reading the books and you think, I'm never not gonna be frustrated ever again. Well, that's not true either. You're gonna be frustrated at times, but it's not gonna turn into anger or rage or severe chronic anxiety or depression or shame and guilt when you understand the concepts of unconditional self-life and other acceptance. So that's really, really, really important. I'm gonna skip a couple and I'm gonna talk about number six because that is super important. Unless I missed one that I like. No, this is the one. Of Now, this is important to talk about in a sense where it makes a little bit more sense, and that is avoid procrastination. Now, if you're a pro procrastinator, I, can always, I always trip over that word, you can accept yourself for that and work at changing it. And even if you were pro procrastinating forever, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But think about the premise of why he's saying this. Avoid procrastination. Do unpleasant tasks fast today. If you still procrastinate, reward yourself with certain things you enjoy. So vacationing, eating, and stuff like that. And then you can punish yourself for stuff like that. I don't think that that might be too beneficial for OCD sufferers because we can become very hard on ourselves. But I do think it is important to work on pro procrastination without de uh, demeaning yourself because building a good foundation, and you're going to, Everyone procrastinates in their lifetime. You're never going to get to some bliss spot where you never procrastinate. But you can get to a point where you work on your low frustration tolerance and it gets a lot better. And that's absolutely key. So, and this is insight number one. So again, these are all reminding things of when you're way on the road to recovery, even things you can remind yourself of when it comes to maintaining your recovery. 
You largely choose to disturb yourself about your upsetting events in your life. You mainly feel the way you think when obnoxious and frustrating things happen to you at point A, you're activating events. You consciously or unconsciously select rational beliefs that lead you to feel sad and regretful, and you also select irrational beliefs that lead you to feel anxious, depressed, and self-hating. And that is absolutely key to go over. Milo's being such a brat right now. I love him, but he's being a brat. That's really, really key. Because in a world where we have many beliefs about, we think that the outside event is the primary cause of why we feel the way we feel. That's not true. So let me go give them a treat so they stop. Come on, let me go get you a treat so you guys can actually let me film a video in peace and not drive me um, to uh, insanity, which I'm already a little crazy, but you know, you know how it goes. So we have this bucket right here that we have to, I have to keep stuff on top of it because if I don't, they get in the treats and then when they get in the treats, it's uh, not good as you can imagine. So, treat one, treat two, leave me alone. So the procrastination is super important. I can't really be any more clear about that. Uh, again, you can accept yourself for being having that quality, but you can work on relieving it. So, and that's really big. So, let's see. There was a couple other things in here that he talks about. This is this is the most important insight. No matter where you are in recovery, beginning, middle, or end, this is something that you'll more than likely need to cover. And that is. There is no magical way for you to change your personality and your strong tendencies to upsetting yourself. The only way to change is through work and practice, work and practice. And a lot of people underestimate the work and practice it needs to go into OCD recovery. The reason why many people don't reach OCD recovery has nothing to do with the tools that we use and the philosophies and going to exposures and certainty, you know, as Rob said today, one of the most important things with getting someone, when you're working with someone with OCD, is having them have a clear understanding of OCD. That is so important for that. Because there's so many people that don't understand OCD, that say they understand OCD when they do not un understand OCD. This isn't to put anyone down, it's just the facts. We see it daily. The stuff I see every day when I talk to people in the community is rubbish, as Rob would say. When it comes to keeping people stuck, people don't know if they're getting reassurance and stuff like that. And that's a really, really big potential problem. So, and that's really all the main things about in this book, but some of the other things that are really important when it comes to maintaining your recovery is having a purpose. Man's search for meaning is really important for this. So having a purpose in your life and understanding that purpose towards recovery. That is absolutely huge. And how do I wanna put this? For myself, when I was really suffering, me starting the business for myself and working on my job and then going hiking and going to the, and going to the gym and hanging out with friends and going out and trying new food and hanging out with my wife and reading books on uh, everything from pol uh, politics to money to Vietnam War. I'm a big war junkie. The, the the purpose I had of learning new material was really, really cool for me, but I had to kind of unwind the belief that I needed to learn everything. So this is kind of a weird video. Uh, I don't really make videos this late at night, but I think it was uh, important for me to not procrastinate for myself because I set myself a goal this month and, I, and I'm going to try my best to complete that goal. So that's why Erica's not home. And so usually Erica watches the dogs while making videos, but Erica's at a marketing event and the dogs are going crazy. They go crazy at night before their walk. So remember, the main point of the video is when you get to a place where, you know, call, it doesn't matter if we call it full recovery. If you get to a place where you're living life on your terms, no matter if you're anxious or you got thoughts and intrusive thoughts, images, sensations, if you're living life on your terms and not letting OCD dictate your life, the tools you have will be important to implement for the rest of your life. Because there's no cure for OCD. We can't get rid of the gene, but we can recover from the disorder. And that is so key. Ladies and gentlemen, think about how lucky we are. Imagine having OCD in 1950, in 1871, in 1456, 2,000 years ago. People had OCD back then. They had no help. We have help. 
We have a lot of help. We have a lot of tools and resources and you know, a lot of the stuff is free and you can you can learn a lot on your own. But you gotta wanna you gotta wanna learn. And there's hope. There's hope to recover. I promise you. I was in the mental hospital. I was low. I had a really a lot of hard times. And I'm here making videos for you folks. Love talking to the community. So don't forget to subscribe and have a great day.